Discipleship Ministries presents a celebration of song from the Black Church experience. As a part of our Africana Heritage Month observance, we present a four-part series with Bishop Ernest Light and the Reverend Dr. Cynthia Wilson, Executive Director of Worship Ministries, examining the unique contributions and wide-ranging styles and genres from the songwriters and composers in the Black Church. We invite you to join in this fourth and final session as Dr. Wilson and Bishop Light explore the reshaping of worship, traditional and contemporary gospel music.
Through It All by Andre Crouch. Andre Crouch was a contemporary. Mm -hmm. He passed away a few years ago, but he was a contemporary for most of us. And what can we say about him? Truly a gifted person, gifted musician, recording artist, songwriter. And one thing to know about Andre Crouch is that he traveled the world. He presented in countries all around the world. Mm -hmm. And he had a significant appeal to people across racial lines, across cultural lines. Right. He had an appeal to people. His music was very, very appealing. And so he sings through it all. Mm -hmm. Now, when we say through it all, I put parentheses there and say, fill in the blanks. <laughs> Whatever it is that you need to put in the blanks, fill in the blanks through it all. Struggles of life, mm -hmm. faith crises, illness, whatever it is, fill in the blanks through it all. Now we say, so what? Through it all. First of all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. That's important. I've learned to trust in Jesus. Now we can know Jesus, we can know about Jesus, but that doesn't mean that we automatically trust Jesus. Do we know Jesus as our friend? Mm -hmm. Through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. Secondly, through it all, I've learned to trust in God. Trust in God. And then finally, I've learned to depend on God's word. Now, I like to say this is the Holy Spirit. See, Crouch is saying that through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. And I've learned to depend on God's word. Depend on the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. How then does God's word, the Bible, inspire you? How does the Holy Spirit inspire you? So what, what, what we need in the Christian life to develop is faith for personal crises. Mm -hmm. Through it all. Now, maybe you say, I don't have any blanks. Well, friends, I want to say to you, if you don't have any blanks in there, don't worry about it. <laughs> Just live long enough, and there are going to be some blanks that you're going to need to fill in. Yes. yes. And you're going to need Jesus. You're going to need to be able to trust in Jesus, trust in God, and surely depend on God's holy word. And you helped us to understand that in your singing, Cynthia, through it all. Now, I just have to add, though, that one little caveat is that, unfortunately, uh, in the United Methodist Hymnal, page 507, we have through it all, but we don't have the entire text. So if you're going to sing this in your church, make sure you get the entire text and sing all of it. Sing all of it. Because it is a true faith statement through it all. Mm -hmm. I, I think I'm inclined to just maybe speak those verses again, Bishop, just to remind us of yes. what, what this testimony is actually said. It, I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. There have been times that I didn't know right from wrong, but in every situation, God gave me blessed consolation that my trials come. Why? Just to make me strong. Who, who doesn't have that testimony, right? I've been a lot of places, seen a lot of faces. There have been times that I, even in the midst of a crowd, I felt so all alone. But in those lonely hours, those precious lonely hours, Jesus made me know what a friend we have in Jesus, right? Amen. I was his own. And then finally, I thank God for the mountains, going back to Tinley and the storms. Yes. I thank God for the valleys and the storms God brought me through. Because if I never, I love this line, if I never had a problem, how would I know that God could solve it? And how would I know what faith in God could do? That's a testimony. That's a testimony. I can testify on all three counts. 
Amen. Mm -hmm. Questions. It's okay to have questions. We ought to have questions about life. Why? We won't get all of the answers, but the answer that we do get is yes. that God will see us through it all. Yes, yes. That's good news, isn't it? That's good news. That's good news. That brings joy to our hearts. It does. It helps us to live victoriously. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is, I think, a good landing for us. These four weeks have been so exciting and so inspiring and such a blessing to my heart. I've been forced to remember the songs that my mom and dad taught me growing up in, as a preacher's kid in the church. Some of these I needed to remember. I needed to remember these messages and these people, these persons, uh, even though the, uh, the Give Me Jesus piece is in public domain and we don't have an actual composer. Uh, but I think we could probably attribute that entire text to the entire community, the entire population. In the morning when I rise, give me Jesus. That would have been everybody's testimony uh, as they lived in the midst of slavery. Uh, but it's been a, a real joy just remembering these songs and Bishop talking about uh, the theology of these songs and, and the, uh, new, ev even in the midst of the Trinitarian uh, understanding of how we heard the songs in, in our various contexts, uh, I, I am just excited that we had an opportunity to have this dialogue. And I'm so grateful to you uh, for spending this time with us. Well, I, I'm very grateful, too, that I had the opportunity to do this because in a very real sense, uh, this experience in these four conversations over these four weeks has taken me back uh, to my roots uh, because, like you, I grew up uh, as a preacher's kid and music was a part of our household. Yes. And there are three of us still living, but my two sisters, one of whom is now deceased, uh, they both became very good musicians and played for church. And my brother, he can still peck a little bit on the piano. And I joke and say that by the time my dad got to me, he started everybody on piano himself. Mm -hmm. By the time he got to me, he gave up. And I never did <laughs> learn how to play the piano. But I did play tuba in school, uh, up through high school. But what I want to say about that is that in our home, we were given an appreciation for music. And I would hope that every pastor, every church musician would work with the congregation to develop a deep appreciation for music, the sacred and the secular. Yes. And to bring uh, into the worship services, the resources that are available to us, the United Methodist hymnal, the songs of Zion, Zion still sings and other resources so that music will enrich the life of the congregation because without music worship has a problem yeah yeah we music helps us to worship god mm -hmm. come into his presence with singing that's right that's singing right. make a joyful noise yes. unto the lord yes and that just brings joy to my heart so thank you for this opportunity to share together in this conversation. Amen. And if you have questions, you will see uh, at the end of this video, uh, the uh, link for our website at Discipleship Ministries. If you have questions or comments that you want to share, we'd love to hear from you. Again, thank you for traveling with us through the celebration of music in the Black Church experience. Wishing you God's choices, blessings. Thank you for joining us for a celebration of song from the Black Church Experience, an Africana Heritage Month series from Discipleship Ministries. See these and other resources at www.umcdiscipleship.org.